In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can import animated 3D objects directly inside of After Effects without any third party plugins, no Element 3D, no Blender, no Cinema 4D, none of that, just straight After Effects and JLB files. Let's go. All right guys, so now that we're inside of After Effects, we have our video clip loaded up right here. Now we have a still video clip, so it's gonna be really easy for us to add our 3D animations and make it look realistic. But if you have movement in your video clip, make sure to track your video by just hitting the track camera button right here on the right hand side. But without further ado, let's dive right into the effect. First thing you're gonna do is get your animated GLB file. I have this animated double cup that I created straight from Blender. And if you wanna check it out, I've linked it below in the description completely for free, animated all myself with all textures and everything and watch this. this is the most insane part drag and drop that's it and you can see it's already dropped in our object i'm just scale it down a bit by like 40 let's do like 30 percent and hit okay and boom there we go we have our 3d object in our scene but wait there's no animation what's going on don't worry just hit the drop down on the glb file hit the drop down in animation options and then click on the name and change it to animation and basically now it's going to apply all the animations that we added to our cup and you can see it's spinning around doing some just cool animations that we don't have to do already pre-animated so if you want to check out this double cup glb file that i created you can get it down below in the link in the description also by the way it's part of our larger 3d floating city objects pack which is just a bunch of mp4 files with green screens that you can just key out and then you have some floating city objects we got cars street lights bullets double cups obviously just a bunch of cool 3d assets that you can add to your video by just keying out the green screen no 3d rendering applications required anyways now that we have our double cup applied to our video it's animated we can just go ahead and scale it and move it around by using these 3d uh, position at anchors right here i'm going to put it right here this first one i'm going to start right here in the bottom right hand corner and then before i animate anything i'm just going to do duplicated a couple times because I want a couple different animated cups. So I'm going to offset that a little bit and hit command D to duplicate it and command D to duplicate it one more time. And then I'm just going to be moving these around to different positions of our scene. I'm moving this one further back into the scene. So it's kind of like more in the background right there. And then this one will move up and move a little bit further back as well. And then another cool thing I recommend doing is just offsetting these on the position timeline so that they're just at different stages of their rotations. They're not all exactly the same. And boom, there we go. Now we got some cool floating lean cups. Now to animate the position, I'm just gonna hit the drop down on each of these GLBs, hit the drop down on transform, create position keyframes at the beginning of all these cups. And then I'm gonna go to the very end of this clip and then I'm just gonna move them up just a little bit. So then that way the cups are actually kind of like floating in the air. And let's just do that for the rest of these cups. I'm gonna speed this part up. And boom, now we have a bunch of floating animated cups. One last thing I recommend to do to just make sure that all these objects fit inside your scene. The number one key component about having good visual effects is lighting. Always lighting, you just have to make sure your lighting is correct. Without it, it just completely ruins the, the effect and makes everything look fake. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new layer and we're gonna create a new light layer. Uh, obviously hence the name and then we're just going to try to match the light settings of the actual video so we kind of have this like nice warmish orange light so i'm going to set it to a very very slightly orange white color let's hit okay and then make sure the intensity is at 100 percent and we're going to set this to a spotlight right here so it's just going to be a certain spot uh, angle direction and now we can go ahead and adjust the position of this light i'm going to zoom out just so i can like move it around a little bit farther and redirect this anchor and now that we have that backlight we're just going to go ahead and hit command d to duplicate it it's going to of course just increase the brightness but we're just going to go ahead and move this other second light around and redirect the position so that the light is coming from the front side as well and we can just go ahead and increase the intensity mess around with it of course but the more lights that you add and the more realistic you try to create it so that it matches your original scene the better your visual effects are going to be trust me one last thing I recommend doing, especially if you have some really close objects to your camera, is selecting all of your GLBs with the lights, right clicking it and pre-composing them. And then you can just name it whatever. And then I go to your, my effects and presets and search for a Gaussian blur. Apply the Gaussian blur to the pre-comp and then just increase the blur a little bit. So that way there's like a little bit of depth of field to the floating cups. And it kind of makes it look a little bit more realistic. And from here, just keep messing around with the lighting. I'd even recommend adding some camera shakes. If you want, you can check out our Shake It Up V2 pack link below in the description. We have a bunch of crazy camera preset shakes there. But with that guys, that's how you add 3D animated objects inside of After Effects without any 3D rendering 
rendering software. It's a really dope new feature. I hope they keep expanding it and adding on to it so that you can add more modifiers from Blender and other 3D softwares. Hope you found something useful and I'll see y'all in the next tutorial. Peace.